Okay, the very first topic that we have to develop a firm grip on is the De Moivre's theorem. Trust me, you guys, I can't stress upon the importance of this theorem enough. It is this very theorem that we are going to extensively use in understanding some very crucial concepts which are going to come up next, like the cube roots of unity and its roots of unity. So you have no choice but to master this theorem. Got it? The very first statement under this theorem says that cos theta plus iota times sine theta raised to the power n is equal to cos n theta plus iota times sine n theta provided n is coming from the set of integers. Basically, if you closely observe the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this equation, you will be able to understand that when the expression cos theta plus iota sine theta is raised to some integral power, then this integer is allowed to dive inside the bracket and become scalar multiple to theta. This is what the statement is trying to say. Yes, let's quickly prove it. We know as a matter of fact that cos theta plus iota sine theta for any real theta represents a unimodular complex number. Let's denote it by z. Okay. Then in the Euler form, it will be represented as e to the power iota theta. What is this statement trying to say? This statement is simply saying that z is having its modulus 1 where its argument is theta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this to the power n. So eventually I will get a power n here and a power n here. Simple. But using the law of exponents in the next step I can write e to the power i into n theta. And when you expand this again using your Euler's formula itself, you will get cos n theta plus iota times sine n theta. This is your z to the power n. So what is this statement trying to say? That even z to the power n complex number is unimodular, its modulus is 1, and its argument is coming out to be n theta. Okay, so did you realize we started with the LHS and proved it equal to the RHS? Now, there's a very beautiful observation hidden here. Let me share that with you. This result is actually saying that when you raise the expression cos theta plus iota sine theta to the power of some integer, what you get is a unique single exactly one answer, which is obtained by making that integer dive inside the bracket and become scalar multiple to theta. Okay, so keep in mind, cos theta plus iota sine theta raised to some integral power n is having a unique single exactly one value given by cos n theta plus iota times sine n theta. But if this power n refuses to be an integer, that means let's say it becomes a rational number. In that case, cos theta plus iota sine theta raised to the power some rational number is not equal to a unique value. In fact, it has multiple answers, multiple values. Yes, let's check this case out. So now we are interested to analyze how does cos theta plus iota sine theta raised to the power n works when n does not come from the set of all integers. In fact, it comes from the set of strictly rational numbers. That means when n looks like p by q, where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. In fact, we can impose few more restrictions here. p is non-zero because if p is 0, what will I get? Cos theta plus iota sine theta to the power 0, which we already know is the complex number 1. Cool. So I can take P to be non-zero and also Q to be strictly positive. Can I do that? See, when I say P is non-zero, that means P will be a strictly positive integer or a strictly negative integer. 
If P is strictly positive, Q positive, that means P by Q will represent a strictly positive rational number. And if P is a negative integer, Q is positive, then P by Q will give you a negative rational number. We're covering all the cases, right? And I can also take the restriction that P by Q is in its lowest form or HCF of P and Q is 1. Fine. So, let's start analyzing the values of cos theta plus iota sine theta to the power P by Q. For that, first of all, let me consider cos theta plus iota sine theta. As I already said, for any real theta, this represents a unimodular complex number. Let's denote it by z. All right. Now, cos and sine we know are 2 pi periodic functions. So, in the next step, I can obviously write this as cos of theta plus 2n pi plus iota times sine of theta plus 2n pi, where n is coming from the set of integers. No doubt. Now, I'm going to write this expression in a beautiful alternate form and you have to justify why am I allowed to do so. Keep looking. I will write this as cos of theta plus 2n pi by q plus iota times sine of theta plus 2n pi by q whole raised to the power q. Can I write it like this? Yes, we've just, we've just learned the de Moivre's theorem for integers. My Q is a positive integer only. So I am going to make this Q dive inside the bracket and become scalar multiple to each of these angles. What will happen is that as a result, QQ will cancel out. Q is positive, QQ will cancel out and I'll end up getting this expression again. Okay, so I'm correct in writing this step. Fine. Now what I'm going to do is play smart. I'm going to raise this to the power 1 by q. As a result, here also I get 1 by q and here also I get 1 by q. q and 1 by q cancel out each other. I'm just left with 1. That means nothing. C. First of all, can I do this? Yes, I can. Because raising to the power 1 by q is equivalent to taking their q with root. Now, try to think. When we computed the square root of a complex number, it came out to be two distinct values. Plus something, minus something. Remember? Similarly, when you will compute the cube roots of a complex number, they will come out to be three distinct values. Obviously, fourth root of a complex number will come out to be four distinct values and so on. Q with root of a complex number comes out to be Q distinct values. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that the Qth root of Z has Q distinct answers. Right in saying so? Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to raise everything to the power P. Okay, what happens in the next step? This P is an integer. So it will, by using my de Moivre's theorem for integers, it will dive inside the bracket and will become scalar multiple to each of these angles. So what I'm going to get is cos of P theta plus 2 P n pi by Q plus iota times sine of P theta plus 2 P n pi by Q. Okay, now P is an integer, N is an integer, so I can just club both of them and write this as K. Fine, what is my expression here? P into 1 by Q simply gives me P by Q. Now, what did I say? That Qth root of Z comes out to be Q distinct values. In each of these distinct values, you raise them to the power P, what you will get is Q distinct answers for Z to the power P by Q also. Okay, so my Z to the power P by Q will also have Q distinct answers. Okay, and what will they be? 
what will be those q distinct answers they will be obtained by plugging in q distinct values of k which primarily are 0 1 2 up till q minus 1 yes do you agree from 0 to q minus 1 these are q values you plug in each of these q values of k in here and you will be getting q distinct answers of z to the power p by q in fact when you plug in any other value of k apart from these q values your answer will be one among these q answers only so are you convinced that cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power p by q is a is having multiple values as its answers and what are they equal to well they are given by cos of p theta plus 2k pi by q plus iota sin p theta plus 2k pi by q where k takes up the value 0 1 2 3 up to q minus 1 yes okay now important thing is this value which you get corresponding to k equals 0 right what is that answer corresponding to k equals 0 when you plug in k equals 0 in here you get cos of p theta plus 0 by q plus iota sin of p theta plus 0 by q which is nothing but cos p theta by q plus iota sin p theta by q so corresponding to k equals 0 what i'm getting is this to be one of the answers of cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power p by q agreed the major take away from here is that when cos theta plus iota sin theta is raised to the power of an integer n then you make this n dive inside the bracket become scalar multiple of theta to give you cos n theta plus iota sin n theta to be the only answer but when you have n as a rational number that means it looks like p by q in this case also when you do the same treatment when you allow this p by q to dive inside the bracket and become scalar multiple of theta what you end up getting is cos p theta by q plus iota sin p theta by q to be one of the answers understood so we have at this point of time completed our discussion over de moivre's theorem for integers and de moivre's theorem for rational numbers yes